Hi, I'm Lauren Phipps here in the Green Biz Studio with Marilyn Devio Louet, and I'm so happy to be talking with you here today at Verge. Um, now, transformative technologies is in your title. What does that actually mean with regards to building a clean economy? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. So I'm with uh, Black & Veatch. Black & Veatch is an engineering and construction company uh, worldwide, and uh, transformative technology focuses specifically on the build of infrastructure for transportation. And we integrate whenever we can energy and renewable energy and energy storage with it. Great. And I know that deploying uh, electric vehicle infrastructure is a big part of what you're focusing on right now. And in the spirit of Verge, we like to think about convergent uh, technologies, systems, and partnerships and people. So who do you actually have to work with uh, as Black & Veatch to deploy EV infrastructure at scale? Mm -hmm. uh, so we involve a lot of different stakeholders in this industry. Um, first of all, you have the OEMs, of course, people who build the cars, the electric buses, electric trucks, the school bus now. And um, they have standards that we need to, uh, to comply to. We work with the utilities. The, those are, of course, the organization that brings power into site for the charging stations. And uh, we work with governmental agencies in order to comply also to regulation and possibly grants, uh, like at the California Energy Commission um, has some incentive to, to help with the adoption of the transportation. Mm -hmm. And you've been coming to Verge for many years, um, and you've been working in this market for a while. So how have you seen this conversation around EVs change in the last seven or eight or so years? And then what should people be looking out for in the future, maybe looking into next year? What trends should people look out for with regards to EVs? So it's a very fascinating, actually, uh, um, especially that now the OEMs are coming up on the market with new model. Uh, at first, seven years ago, we started just with the passenger cars, right? And we didn't have too much choices, not too much model. Tesla was definitely the, the, the avant-garde of uh, the OEM in that field, since uh, many other OEMs have picked up on, the, on the, the trend of going electric and bringing clean technology into the market. Um, there's also the fuel cells technology with hydrogen uh, system, hydrogen stations are coming to the market that are also uh, very efficient energy-wise. And uh, the trend has really been that with the new technology being able to um, uh, charge the systems faster, uh, since one of the demand and the challenges we had in the industry was uh, uh, not being able to charge enough and having a range that was too limited uh, for lots of applications. But uh, for lots of applications where they need a, a much longer range, um, the technology a couple of years ago was not ready, and now it's ready. Uh, the, the big step forward has been to go with higher power, fast DC charging station. We're now working with 150 to 350 kilowatt stations, which allow you know, um, um, different vehicles to be charged in five or 10 minutes, which is a great step up. The other trend has been uh, with the stakeholders' involvement is to have discussion with the utilities, which we didn't have as much before. They were not deregulated, uh, but now they can invest in the market, so they can even own and operate stations and network. Uh, so it's a great flux of uh, uh, additional support, financial support to grow the market. So it seems like the market's definitely growing quickly, but what do you think it'll actually take to scale at the rate needed? Oh, it'll take a lot of uh, elements. I would say policy is by far number one. We see the example of Europe, uh, Japan, China now uh, starting to uh, uh, mandate, uh, you know, very strong uh, clean technology uh, system, in, in especially in metropolitan areas. Well, um, last year there was a great example in Germany where uh, the diesel trucks that could could not actually uh, uh, deliver any package in the cities anymore, so the de delivery companies could not operate, uh, meaning that you have to find another way. So this type of policy has a huge impact on the market. Uh, in California, we have a great example uh, with our state where uh, we have to reach goal uh, to eliminate diesel uh, first by 2030, then by 2040. So it's helping um, the fleet market especially to, to find solutions. So everybody's working together. And there's a lot of uh, confidence in the market now because those are not short-term policies, they are long-term policies. So um, especially the private sector can do plans for the long-term and invest in the long-term. It is right now more expensive, so we do need to have the total cost of ownership uh, parity, which would be ideally the same as what we currently have on the market. 
once that's achieved, then uh, nothing's going to stop the market to go completely, you know, clean tech, zero emission. That's what the goal is. Definitely. Well, it's very exciting time to be in this field. So thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. Thank you.